gram negative bacilli <coughs> this is the most important pictorial that you have to be 100% sure they are being divided into diplococci coccobacilli bacilli and the comma shaped organisms that's a broad classification now among the diplococci they are aerobic and uh, you will look whether they can be able to ferment the maltose or not the maltose utilization if they cannot then they are the gonorrhea if they can then they are the meningitis so neisseria meningitis and neisseria gonorrhea favorite question of the examiner how do you differentiate it is the utilization of the maltose Young for meningi meningitis, Neisseria meningococcus, and young for maltose is what you have to basically remember. <coughs> I am unable to zoom, but uh, you can do one thing. On the Google, you have uh, this uh, particular um, uh, classification. <coughs> you can always uh, review. Then Cocobacilli. H. influenza, Bordetella petrosis, then Pasteurella, these are all called Cocobacilli. Then you have the comma shaped organisms. Typically, comma shaped organisms are all oxidase positive. But how do you differentiate these comma shaped organisms from one another? If they can grow at 47 degrees Celsius, that is a classical bullet about the campylobacter jejuni suppose if can if it can grow in an alkaline medium that is a cocobacillus comma shaped sorry a comma shaped oxidase positive gram negative organism growing in the alkaline media tomorrow examiner is going to ask you with all these pearls and ask you to discover what is that that is vibrio cholera if it is a comma shaped oxidase positive gram negative and urease producing then your answer should be helicobacter pylori is what you have to basically remember then comes the bacilli bacilli fundamentally are differentiated there are lactose fermenting and whether they are <coughs> whether they are lactose fermenting or whether they are not suppose if they are lactose fermenting are they fast fermenters or slow fermenters that's how you differentiate the e coli klebsiella enterobacter these three don't forget they are called as the fast lactose fermenters among the gram negative organisms is what you need to remember Suppose if they are slow fermenters, then you are having the Cervatia marisans like organism which is called the slow fermenter. Similarly, among the lactose fermenting, I mean non-lactose fermenting, you will look whether they can, they do have a oxidase or not is very important. If it is there, the oxidase is positive and it is not a lactose fermenter but it is a gram negative bacillus that is the classical way you will reach the pseudomonas is going to be your answer suppose if it is a bacillus not a lactose fermenter not even oxidase positive then you will look whether it can produce hydrogen sulfide or not if it produces the hydrogen sulfide then salmonella proteus are the ones which have produced the hydrogen sulfide Whereas Shigella and Ersenia do not produce the hydrogen sulfide. So this is how you will reach to a conclusion as to what type of gram-negative bacillus it is. 
yesterday we discussed gram positive right that you should not forget gram negative also similarly you should not forget if you remember these two doctor i am assuring you two marks are there in your pocket there is no way that you will lose the two marks and uh, most of the times we think microbiology anantanarayanan is like a jungle and uh, always we feel lethargic to read that but otherwise the story is very simple now let us run through the bullets echinella carudens what do you know about it it is the human bites that transmit and ampicillin sulbactam is considered to be the treatment of choice don't forget nisseria cateralis what is the other name given for that moraxella cateralis is also the other name it loses the mucus it attacks the respiratory tract even the normal respiratory flora and uh, we get lot of uh, otitis sinusitis and all that no earlier we discussed what is the most common cause for that but the third most common cause for that is the moraxella cateralis and it can also lead to pneumonia so this is how a typical moraxella looks like now comes the nisseria gonorrhea four to five important points about it it is a gram negative diplococcus now all of you know very well then what is that medium you should not forget when it comes to gonococcus tayer martin's medium is the one which you should not forget it produces iga protease and uh, the pili that it is having they can show a variation of the phage phage variation and because of that it is difficult to kill them sometimes they become resistant then they can lead to neonatal blindness urethritis synovitis synovitis and they can lead to fitz hugh cutis where the pus through the fallopian tube spreads into the liver is the one which you need to remember about nisseria gonorrhea in this entire story only one thing you should not forget doctor tayer martin you should bookmark tayer martin if you do that bookmark on the u medico app which is going to be next version released every day morning when you wake up no it will say hey tayer martin tell me what, where do you find that where do you remember that until you feel that yeah i know that it is nisseria gonorrhea and i remember tayer martin until that the app keep reminding you so this is a typical chocolate agar and uh, if you take any rectal sample if you simply take chocolate medium and uh, if you try to grow all organisms can grow but if you put tayer martin only nisseria will grow that's the reason what is that kind of uh, culture medium called as i am very happy to see 129 online watching very good please thank you very much for giving your time on dashra yeah now nisseria gonorrhea ah what is that kind of medium called selective medium tayer martin kind of medium now this is another example on a tayer martin selective agar how does nisseria look like the small grayish white to colorless but a mucoid colonies is a description of the nisseria gonorrhea now when it comes to biochemical reactions you should always remember doctor maltose fermentation why is it important if at all gonococci are there they can ferment the glucose but not the maltose whereas the meningococci can ferment the maltose m for meningococci m for maltose you are not going to forget you will remember when the examiner asked this question then what is nisseria meningitis five points that you should remember if at all there is a gram negative diplococci with the big capsule that is the meningococcus it can ferment the maltose it has got the pili which will help it to get into the respiratory tract and uh, if i ask you a question very unique thing about the nisseria meningitis which you should not forget 
it is the only bacteria which can be able to release the toxin even when it is in its long phase. There is no other bacteria which can do that. You know, bacterial growth is being divided into log phase, lac phase and all that, right? Only bacteria, even in the log phase, which can be able to release the toxin, that is the speciality about the Neisseria meningitis. waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome, where adrenal get involved, disseminated intravascular coagulation, development of the hypertension, shock, blah, blah, blah. All these things are easy to remember. The only buzzword you need to remember about the Neisseria meningitis is it ferments the maltose is the keyword that should you should be waiting in the exam hall for the question. Hey, maltose ka question agaya. That kind of a not a defensive approach but a offensive approach you should exam. Go to the exam. Dangal, you have seen the movie, no? Defense versus offense. So, defense play nahi karna. Agar aap defense play kar rahe to, you are not uh, fit for the competition. You should be very sure what examiner is going to ask on every high yield topic. That day, if 650 topics, if you are there, then automatically you should play offensive and come out of exam hall. So, Nisseria meningitis. It grows on the both chocolate agar, which is non-selective and Thayer Martin. It is oxidase positive. It can also utilize the maltose is what need to be remembered. Now, let us talk about Ixodus tick disease. Sashi Reddy, Sangeeta, Tariq, Manoj Thakur. Wonderful. We have a large number of classmates. Coincidentally, becoming a common cohort every day evening by this new friendships form. And that's how the preparation is supposed to be. Lyme disease, babesiosis, ehrlichosis. All the three you should remember. Tick, tick, tick. Now, how do you differentiate? You have a migrating target lesion in limes. Babesiosis lead to hemolysis, just like malaria, which is a intraerythrocytic organism. Even babesia also is inside the RBC. That is the specialty of it. Then puncture wounds can lead to development of ehrlichosis is what I want to underscore to all of you. <clears throat> so this is what in Lyme disease what you have? Erythema chronicum migrans is what you have to basically remember when it comes to Lyme disease. In Babesia, this is going to come as a spotted for you in the NEED PG 2019 paper out you should recognize looking at the slide. Tetrads are there, no doctor. That is how inside the RBC, tetrads. This is the typical nature. If you do the gene sustain, the Babesia is being recognized. Then ehrlichosis, what is the specialty of it? Ehrlichosis is called human granulocytotropic ehrlichosis. It love, it falls in love with the granulocytes is what you need to remember. Now let us talk about the gram-negative rods. Bacteroidus fragilis. Why do you want to remember it? Post-operatively, if there is a development of a pelvic abscess, what is the agent implicated? It is bacteroidus. What are the drugs you will remember for bacteroidus treatment? Metadazole, clindamycin, sofoxetin are the ones which are used. Then, in this context, you should remember, G protein is being inhibited by certain bacterial toxins. Favorite question of the examiner. I mean, inhibited or stimulated. Purchases, what does it do? It inhibits the inhibitory G, G protein, that is GI. Inhibits is minus into Inhibitory G means into minus, minus into minus become plus. So that is how purchases inhibits inhibitory form of G, G protein. Cholera, it ons the on is what you need to remember. It ons means stimulates the stimulatory form of G protein called GS. 
E. coli also like cholera owns the on that is stimulates the stimulatory form of the G is what I want to underscore to all of you. 